Hello and welcome back to my channel Code with Ease by Varsha. We are doing a series on coding patterns. In the previous videos, we have discussed about the introduction and overview of coding patterns, uh, what they are, why they are being used, what problems they are trying to solve, uh, how they are being used. So I would highly recommend to check that out. I'm going to link it up in the description below. If you're someone who's learning DSA for the first time or is a working professional who wants to revisit the basics, I think coding patterns comes to the rescue because uh, it gives a holistic 360 degree picture of what you are learning. So it just helps to plan the learning better. And uh, as part of this series, we are going to cover in depth about each and every pattern, what they are, uh, the pattern is, why the pattern is being used, how can we identify such patterns in the questions, look for clues in the questions, uh, what is the underlying technique behind every pattern and all of that we are going to cover. So I'm hoping this would help uh, many of you guys. So stay tuned and uh, if you wish to get further updates on this coding pattern series, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon of course. So without further ado, let's jump right in. We are going to talk about is uh, called cyclic sort. This is uh, something which may not be very popular as bubble sort or quick sort or mud sort. But as the name suggests, this is a sorting algorithm. How is it different from uh, all the traditional sorting algorithms? We'll find it out. So again, as the name suggests, uh, cyclic sort technique or pattern is also used for sorting a uh, given set of numbers. Uh, for any traditional sorting algorithm, what we know so far is uh, we know of bubble sort, insertion sort, and selection sort. We also know of quick sort and merge sort. The time complexities of these sorting algorithms ranges from order of n square to order of n log n. Okay, in case of cyclic sort, what in case of cyclic sort, what happens is, um, okay, how it works? There is a range of numbers which is given to us. When I say range of numbers, I mean it can be something from one to n, or it can be from zero to n. So we can have numbers which are something like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, something till n. Or we can have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 till n. Now, at any given point in time, it is not necessary that all the numbers will be present in the given array. But if at all it has to start from 0 or 1, it has to start from that number and it has to continue till given n. n is going to be the length of the array. So, like I was saying that the time complexity of traditional sorting algorithms ranges from order of n square to order of n, n log n and there isn't any such kind of a restriction that it has to be in a certain range, right? So, how the cyclic sort is different from the traditional algorithm? First, the cyclic sort algorithm always applies on this given range of numbers whereas the traditional sorting algorithm doesn't necessarily have to rely on a certain range of numbers. That is number one. Number two is it is a more optimized way of sorting integers. When I say optimized, what I mean by that, it requires the sorting of the numbers, whatever we have in the given range of 1 to n or 0 to n. Zero to n. It requires the sorting to be done in order of n, like in single scan. If it is possible, it needs to be done in single scan. That is a requirement of this particular algorithm sort the numbers in one scan of the array. Is it possible through any of those traditional algorithms that we know bubble sort, merge sort, quick sort? No, right? But it is possible in case of this because we are going to take advantage of the fact that the numbers are in a certain range. How are we going to do that? We'll find it out. Okay, so let's try to understand how this works. So let's say we have these numbers 3, 4, 1, 2, 5. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The length of the array is 5 and we have the numbers from 1 to n. We have all of these numbers. The requirement is we have to sort this array. Okay, and we have to sort this array in single scan like we said. So what we can do? If we sort this array, what is the output going to be like? It is going to be something like we'll have 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Right? So this needs to be converted into this. Now if you notice, the index positions of all of these after sorting, uh, what are the index positions like this? So after sorting, if these, this is my final array is going to look like this. 
Notice there is a relation between the index number and the number that we are storing. Essentially because it is in a given range. The a given number is nothing but the index value plus 1. 0 plus 1, 1 plus 1, 2, 2 plus 1, 3 and so on. And this is the very fact which we are going to make use of. This is a special property which we are going to make use of for sorting this array in one single pass. What we do is, we first of all check if a given number, we start from the first number and we check that if this is at the correct index or not. When I say correct index, 3 needs to be at index number 2. What is there at index number 2? Let me write the index values also. At index number 2, it is 1. Whereas 3 should lie over here. So what we will do is swap it. Okay. And hence the name of cyclic sort. So all kind of, uh, I mean the entire sorting that is happening is going to happen in the form of cycles or in the form of swaps. This will get swapped with this. Then another number will get swapped with another number. So it happens in the form of multiple cycles. Hence the name cyclic sort. Okay. So coming back to this, so 3 needs to go over here. So I'll just rewrite over here so that I can show all the number of scans. So when 3 goes over here, it gets swapped and then we get this array, right? We keep on doing this check until we have landed the number at its correct index. So now 1 is at a correct index, okay? Because 0 plus 1 is 1. We'll go to the next number. Is 4 at the correct index? No, it is not. Swap it. So we'll do it like 1, 2, 4. 3 and 5 will remain as is. So 1 and 2 are at the correct index. It turns out that 3 is also at the correct index. 4 is at the correct index. 5 is at the correct index. So in this case, we have been able to get our output array in one single scan. We didn't have to do a, a scan for all the elements, uh, however, but that is what. By simply swapping the numbers, with the number where it should actually lie with the uh, the correct index where that element should lie, we have been able to sort this given array. So if we talk of the time complexity over here, what is going to be the worst case time complexity? Over here, how many swaps we have done? We have done essentially uh, two swaps. So one swap we did at this index, another swap we did at this index. So we need two swaps and we traversed over two elements only. So by the time we reached our third element, the array was already sort sorted. So two elements chose. But this doesn't turn out to be a worst case time complexity. In case of worst case, what would have happened? Okay, try to break it down. What is actually happening? We are doing it in two parts. One is we are putting the element, the current element, at its current position. Right? by checking the index value. So when we are doing this, we are actually, let's say if this is 3, if this is the current element and we are putting it at the correct position. And this thing we are doing it as long as the current element is not at its current po correct position. Right? So, which means that we are doing some number of swaps. So how many number of swaps we are doing? We are going to do n minus 1 swaps. Just think about it. If 3 is not at the correct position, we are swapping 3 with the, the, so if 3 is not at the correct position, we are swapping 3 with the number where it should actually be. So we will continue to do it for all the numbers until we arrive at the correct one. When I say, what I mean to say is, we could have done like 3 is swapped over here. Then another name number came over here, which is still not at the correct index. So we will keep on doing it until we have swapped it with other 4 elements. So hence n minus 1 swaps. That is point number 1. What is the second thing that we are doing? We are traversing every element. In worst case, remember all the points what I am writing. This is the generic scenario which I am doing in the worst case. I am putting the current element in its correct position which requires certain number of swaps. Number 1. Number 2. I have to traverse every element to check whether that element needs to be put at the correct index position or not. If it doesn't need to be put, I'm fine. If it has to be put, then I have to traverse all the elements equally. <clears throat> now, when I'm traversing every element, I'm traversing essentially n number of elements. So what is the worst case time complexity going to be? n minus 1 swaps plus n swaps, which is 2n minus 1 swaps, which uh, essentially boils down to generically 
order of n time complexity. Space complexity, constant. We are not requiring any data structure. So how can I sum it up? This sorting technique requires the entire sorting of the given array to be done in a single swap in order of n and in constant space. And the property that we are making use of is it's a given range of numbers. So if this technique at all needs to be used in any kind of coding problem, what are the things we have to notice? Number one, the range. If at any given point in time you're told the number in the array lies in a given range, it can be zero to n, whatever it is, it has to be something like a consecutive range of numbers. Cyclic sort technique should come to the mind. Of course, uh, range of the number should be there. And then another thing, it should be there, something related to sorting you have to do. Okay. Uh, you may not be asked to do directly uh, to sort the numbers. Okay. You might be asked something like, okay, let's see one of um, the lead code questions. Notice this question, it is called to find the missing number. So in this, there's an array num which is containing n distinct numbers in the range 0 to n. And we have to return the only number in, in the range that is missing. So in this, clearly, there is no mention of any kind of sorting. However, there is a mention of a range that it lies in a certain range 0 to n. If you see this example, 301 are the elements. What is the number that is missing? Very obviously, if it has to start from 0, 0, 1, then 2 should be there, then 3. So 2 is the number which is missing. Again, when we say n, n is the length of the array. Length of the array is 3. Numbers which should be present are 0, 1, 2, and 3, but 2 is missing. So this kind of a question where there is no mention of a directly sorting, but the thing what we have to solve that, you know, like we have to find out the missing number that should be as an outcome of applying the cyclic sort. So these things we have to look for. Okay. There are many different questions which we are anyway going to cover as part of the cyclic sort series. So stay tuned for that. We are starting a series very soon on cyclic sort related questions. So in that we'll also try to, um, uh, decode what are the different indications that we should look for in the question but overall for today's session the only thing we can say to sum it up is whenever there is a mention of a range uh 0 to n 0, 1 to n anything of that sort try to think at least once if cyclic sort can be applied to this to solve the question if you if you need it you can do a dry run quickly to find it out so with that it's a wrap on today's session on uh, cyclic sort I hope you guys have enjoyed the session today and found it useful. Don't forget to like it, share um, so that it can reach out to others also. And please hit the subscribe button, press the bell icon for getting notifications as and when we upload newer videos. Thank you so much for watching.